I know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. And it is time for us, those weekend golf guys. I'm John Ashton in the studio. He is Jeff Smith in the golf cave in Edinburgh, Indiana, Timbergate Golf Course. Beautiful sure. golf course on a beautiful day, although we just heard some sirens in the background. You got lightning in the area, man. We got lightning in the area, right? right. All the heat has happened. Uh, it is the, the pop up thunderstorms that we always see every <sighs> midsummer yeah. uh, are upon us. You know, it, it's here. It's, um, they, they just spring up, you know? It's kind of like it starts you, off the day and it's steamy yeah. and, and yeah. the clouds build up. They get real vertical and boom, here comes the lightning. And that's it. Next thing you know, Golfers are in the building. And in the Spend words of Bob Seeger, we're waiting on the thunder. It makes it kind of a gamble when when you actually make it in tea time. You know, because you can you can look in the I don't know where it is where what the weather's like where you are in the summertime, but here I mean when I was on the radio five days a week, we always used to make fun of our weather uh, channel meteorologist who uh, worked with us because we didn't need him in the summertime. I could have given that weather forecast. Hazy, hot, humid with a chance of afternoon thunderstorms. That's what it was every day from like June through the end of September. Uh, so you take your chances. That's where we are. Yeah, right. You take your chances, man. Um, and if it doesn't, if you don't have a thunderstorm today, then, you know, it makes tomorrow morning tea time's kind of iffy because, you know, this stuff builds up and it hangs out a lot. The waiting's not the hardest part because you can always hang out, talk, whatever with people, get to know people. Uh, but, but it's the, it's after the deluge cart path only. Like, yeah, I don't want to do cart path only, please. Right, come on, man. It happened, and then the water hasn't drained away. You know yeah. you're going to deal with it. I was, you need to walk more. I was at a course. You need to get out there, John, with one of those push carts. Mm. Yeah, it could happen. It could I, happen. I was at a course <laughs> last week where um, we we had an early tea time, but about ten o'clock in the morning, the thunderstorm started, and it was it was a deluge. And uh, the pro came out and he said, guys, he said, I'm just going to give you a rain check because even when this stops, I'm going to have to wait a long time for the course to drain before I can let anybody out. So it was I mean, we're we're talking little, you know, lakes in the in the bunkers and big puddles on the greens and all yeah. that kind of stuff that's not conducive to uh, having a fun round. So, yeah. But we've got a lot of conversation coming up, and we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff that is conducive to having a fun round. So stick with us, because we are those weekend golf guys, and we will be right back. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us, facebook.com slash golf guys. Stunning. You don't have to hit a shot to fall in love with the Pete Dye and Donald Ross courses at French Lake Resort. Our hotel and golf packages are the way to go. Add the casino and spas, and it's a road trip for the memory book. Safely get back to the game you love with one of the packages found online at FrenchLick.com. Legendary golf at French Lick Resort. A breath of fresh air. Must be 21 to enter casino. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Have you watched another weekend of PGA Tournament Golf realizing, hey, I don't have any skin in the game? Add to the excitement of watching by going to DraftKings, a leader in daily fantasy sports. They'll put you in the center of the action with a free shot at $1 million top prize with your first deposit. Easy to play. What you do, you pick six golfers. You stay under the salary cap. You submit your lineup before the tournament tees off on Thursday. Then you sit back and follow the action. The more red numbers they have on the leaderboard, the closer you'll be to winning some green. You can rack up points for pars, for birdies, finishing positions and a whole lot more. All right, you may not be able to get a ticket and actually go to the course, but DraftKings is giving you the opportunity to scratch your competitive itch and reign supreme. Download the DraftKings app right now. Use the code WEEKEND during sign-up. This week, DraftKings is putting you in the action with a free shot at a $1 million top prize. The code WEEKEND, and you can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. These are unprecedented times, challenging how the YMCA works to strengthen community as we have for nearly 170 years. But we've always found ways to help people and communities in times of crisis. Right now, Ys across the country are providing emergency child care, shelter, food programs, and outreach to seniors. But we can't do it alone. Whether you're connected to the Y or have a fond Y memory, we need you to stay with us. Reach out to your local Y today and stay with us. 
for a better us. And thanks for hanging. We are those weekend golf guys. I am John Ashton in studio. He is Jeff Smith, the golf cave, Edinburgh, Indiana's Timbergate Golf Course. Jeff, you have been uh, busily working already this weekend, and you've got uh, some short game lessons you've been giving out. You know, short game the being the tough, toughest part for most of us, man. Well, I think it's because it requires a couple things. It requires your willingness to think that it's something more than just, a, oh, it's an easy shot because I don't have to hit it very far, therefore I won't go practice it because that happens. It does. I don't, I don't need chipping. That, it's, that's nothing, right? I Just give me the help with the driver. We're good to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I see that. It is the easiest thing to talk about is to send people to practice some short game stuff. So you know what I do is I give them some challenges and I give them some things that are common shots off of a tight lie, a medium lie and a fluffy lie and then a thick dense lie. Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, let's go hit five of each. And then I say, here, we're going to get this all within five feet. And next thing you know, the short game shots are not so easy to those people. And I've, what I've just done is I've said, we're going to hit 20 shots to test five shots, each scenario, all common shots, you know, the ones that you frequently see on the golf course. And then when they can't get a bunch of them or many or any, uh, inside of five feet, I look at them and go, I thought you said this was the easy part of the game (laughs) based on how many greens you're missing. Don't you want to? Get it up and down. You must just be having a bad day, buddy. <laughs> no, I'm not really. I kind of go that way. It's just all a matter of the mood that I'm in when I say I know. it. <laughs> but, you know, see, that's the thing is that people think certain parts of the game are easy. Therefore, they won't practice it. And mm-hmm. then they're not so easy. But they all think that, well, the short game, you know, it's a short little shot. I Come on. Anybody can do that. You're right. Anybody can do that because it doesn't require strength. But it does require finesse and talent. Yeah, so anything inside of 50 yards, I defy anybody to tell me that any human being in the world can't get great at it because it really doesn't require a lot of strength. Now, okay, there's the scenario where it's 10 feet off the green or 10 yards off the green or 20 yards off the green, but it's in the hay Mm -hmm. and it requires some strength there. All right, I'll give you that, that one. Sure. But for the most part, it really doesn't require that much strength. It requires the club landing in the right spot, right below the ball. Mm -hmm. using the sole plate of the club and catching it cleanly and making sure that you've got the right club in your hand. And did you come in shallow or did you come in steep to tell the ball to go up or to go farther, you know, to spin more or less? It requires some finesse. So I go through this challenge with people when they say stuff like that to me. And then I ask them again, what's more effective for your score and how are we going to break 80? You know, because everybody that wants that, right? They mm-hmm. all come out and say, man, I, I feel like I'm right on the cusp. I'm, I just need to hit the ball a little better. And the truth is, is they need to putt it a lot better. Exactly. And they need to chip and pitch it a whole lot better. Mm-hmm. Because they could hit the ball just a little bit better and improve those other areas and drop four or five shots. But just because they struck it better didn't mean that they're going to score lower because they're still going to miss greens. And yeah. they're still going to mess it up from there. So we go through different things, right? Just this morning, I had a guy out, a young kid, lefty. And uh, he's 20 some odd years old, brand new to the golf. Cool. And said, I want to learn how to play this game, but I don't want to go about it in a way that's going to take me forever. Can you help me? And I sat him down in the first hour. We said, sure, here's how, here's the plan. So we talked about in striking a golf ball to move it wherever it was hand placement, you know, his grip. Mm-hmm because of what it meant to his arms and how he's going to flow. And we did all these tests on him to say, okay, here's, here's how you're going to do this. And then I gave him some short game shots and we went out and practiced them. And he came back this morning and he started really early this morning. He showed up and hit his short game shots. And then I showed him how his hands and arms were working together, how they were moving the club, how they were getting the club face down to the bottom of the ball. All these things were simple. And you'd look at this talented young kid and he'd barely played any golf. And all I did was put his hands on it in a way that worked. Mm-hmm. Talk to him about the bottom of the arc of the swing, how to thump the ground with the sole plate and put that right underneath the golf ball. And he's hitting beautiful shots. You wouldn't know that from inside 20 yards, he wasn't 10 handicapper or better. And that's basically because he didn't start with any preconceived notions about how easy it should be. He just wanted to learn how to do it right from the get go. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I started him with the medium rough lie, right? Okay. Something where you could get the club below it, 
mm-hmm. see some instant success. His brain could see that. And then we went, oddly enough, we went to the taller rough. And he saw that he could put a little bit more effort into the shot and that he moved the ball a little bit more forward to get the height because he understood if I swing harder, the ball's going to go farther unless I add more loft. Mm-hmm. And then I told him about don't be turning your club face, you know, because when you're swinging harder and you turn your club face open, you could come up with some really bad stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like so he, he taking out he got some that. of your playing partners. I don't, I don't always hit my sandwich 170 yards, but when I do, <laughs> it's, it. it's out of a greenside bunker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly so right. We, we went to the thicker, heavier rough, right? Nothing painful. And then he learned that that could work. And then I talked to him about going a little bit softer. And then we went on to the fairway and he pitched it from there. And he thought, well, this is golf is easy. Mm. So I taught him a shot that most people think is easy and then they never practice. And then it winds up being hard. And I started with that. And then so I worked with that again this morning. And then we went to putting. So we went from basically pitch shots to chip shots to putting. And so in two sessions, this guy has just learned about scoring. And I'm not going to keep him at that very long, but I think lesson number three, he's, he wants to come for five and want me to introduce him to, to all things. But I think in lesson number three, we'll start with getting it up and down so that I can impress upon him scoring. Scoring because, being, I mean, if you can't score well, because... Like, like you say, a, a lot of us can hit the ball, yeah. but when it comes time to get down to the brass tacks, the scoring part, the short game, the pitches, the chips, the putts, we are woefully short. I mean, you can, you can lip out a three foot putt and it's still going to cost you the same amount of strokes that hitting the ball into the rough and taking an extra shot to get to the green would, would, would give you. So it, it becomes a much smaller, uh, uh, the word escapes me. You, it's okay. You're a wordsmith guy. Yeah. 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 Radio wordsmith, guy. Been doing meet this forever. Jeff Smith. Um, we've got, <laughs> we've got uh, you know, you just, the, the, the area that you can screw it up in is much smaller, but the chances of you screwing it up increase when you dramatically, get, you get, when you get too closer to the hole. Who, who needs to learn how to chip better is most of us because how many have said, and I quote at least once in a round, well, at least I'm pin high. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's right. I, I might not be on the green, but I got it there. Yeah. I'm still 40 yards to the right, but at least I'm pin high. That's right. Um, and Which then means you're man enough to get it there in two shots. Right. But when, <laughs> yeah, so distance is not a problem. Accuracy, that's a problem. Well, interestingly enough, right, when you say that, there's a lot of people who actually have enough club head speed to play the kind of golf they want to play right now. Yeah. But they don't have accurate delivery of the face of the club yeah. very well. Yeah. And so their ball goes all over the place, yeah. which means they really need a great short game because they're going to need it. Yeah, exactly. And one they're going to have to use it all the time. One of the things, I mean, you have always, always preached when you're learning to play the game, start at the green and work your way backwards. I have because I, I rarely get to choose that for the student because the student usually says to me, I, I want to hit the ball straighter. I want to hit the ball farther. And that to me is golf. Yeah. Right. right. My second lesson of this morning is, is a guy who will come to the studio. He is under control of his golf ball, but for him, it's only a contact issue. And what does it feel like at impact? So he doesn't even want to work on the launch monitor and see the flight because he knows his flight. Okay. So he's not worried about whether the launch monitor tells him that or not. He is coming into the studio to take away flight gotcha. so that he can focus solely on contact. Okay. So it's less about his technique and his flight, it's about what he feels and how he sets himself up and how does he get his club right down to where it has to get to, to make the best, cleanest contact. So in that he is a guy who loves to come and, and yes, he likes the air conditioned studio too. Um, (laughs) There's one thing we're going to take a quick break here in a minute, but there's, there's one thing I want you to think about because it's something that, I know it's hard for you to answer because the, the best answer is, well, it depends. But <laughs> You've heard me enough, haven't but you? But generically speaking, we all carry multiple wedges in our bag. We probably use one of them better than the others because we're more comfortable with it. But we just need to set out some scenarios when we come back to determine what wedge for what condition and what you want to accomplish. Because sometimes we're using the wrong club for the right shot, etc. So think on that. Give yourself a few minutes to tell me an answer other than it depends, and we'll be right back. We are those weekend golf guys. More short game stuff coming up. Don't get your move. Hey, 
Have you watched another weekend of PGA Tournament Golf realizing, hey, I don't have any skin in the game? Add to the excitement of watching by going to DraftKings, a leader in daily fantasy sports. They will put you in the center of the action with a free shot at $1 million top prize with your first deposit. Easy to play. What you do, you pick six golfers. You stay under the salary cap. You submit your lineup before the tournament tees off on Thursday. Then you sit back and follow the action. The more red numbers they have on the leaderboard, the closer you'll be to winning some green. You can rack up points for pars, for birdies, finishing position and a whole lot more. All right, you may not be able to get a ticket and actually go to the course, but DraftKings is giving you the opportunity to scratch your competitive itch and reign supreme. Download the DraftKings app right now. Use the code WEEKEND during sign-up. This week, DraftKings is putting you in the action with a free shot at a $1 million top prize. The code WEEKEND, and you can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Stunning. You don't have to hit a shot to fall in love with the Pete Dye and Donald Ross courses at French Lake Resort. Our hotel and golf packages are the way to go. Add the casino and spas and it's a road trip for the memory book. Safely get back to the game you love with one of the packages found online at FrenchLick.com. Legendary golf at French Lake Resort. A breath of fresh air. Must be 21 to enter casino. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Every time I come home from playing golf, my knees hurt. And I kind of walk around going, and my wife says, you know, this is ridiculous. Why don't you find something else to do? I said, you're right, it's ridiculous. You're wrong, I need to find something else to do. What I need to find is something else to take the pain away. And I found it. Enter old Max Health. I was looking to get rid of nagging joint pain immediately while providing long-lasting recovery. And old Max said, Boy, have we got what you need. Cryo-Freeze CBD Roll-On. It's non-prescription, triple-action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, to reduce inflammation, and to improve muscle and joint flexibility. And the best part is it's 100% natural. CBD-powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes. And relief lasts up to 8 hours. Omax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of cryo-free CBD pain relief roll-on, plus free shipping. Just go to omaxhealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND. That's O-M-A-X Health.com. Enter WEEKEND and get 20% off cryo-freeze and anything site-wide. Stunning. You don't have to hit a shot to fall in love with the Pete Dye and Donald Ross courses at French Lake Resort. Our hotel and golf packages are the way to go. Add the casino and spas, and it's a road trip for the memory book. Safely get back to the game you love with one of the packages found online at FrenchLick.com. Legendary golf at French Lick Resort. A breath of fresh air. Must be 21 to enter casino. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Hey, thanks for hanging. We're back, those weekend golf guys. John Ashton here, Jeff Smith there. Wedges. I have yeah. what, counting the pitching wedge, I have four of them in my bag. Most of us do. I do, yes. Got pitching wedge, sand wedge, gap wedge, and a lob wedge. All of them do different things. They do. Different how, tools. How do you determine which wedge to use when? I'm going to avoid the words, it depends. Thank you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assess the situation. What's my lie? Do I have to fight through grass behind it? Is the ball sitting up in the grass, down in the grass, way down in the grass? Do I have to fight through grass in front of it? How much speed do I need to get it out of that grass? How high do I need this ball to fly? How far do I need this ball to fly? What do I need the ball to do at the when it lands? Do I need it to sit down? Do I need it to trickle out? Do I need to bounce and roll out? So given the different situations, I will make my choice. Mm Mm-hmm. How's that for not saying it depends? Well, that's great. But, you know, the translation of what you just said is it depends. <laughs> <laughs> but now we just need to know, you know, just tell us what you would do club versus or vis-a-vis condition. So here we are. Let's say I've got a thick, rough lie, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have to fight down at the bottom, put some extra effort into the shot because the grass is going to slow my ball down, right? Let's yeah. say it's we we painted the picture. It's after a rain. So the grass is thicker. Right. Well, not thicker, but more dense. There's more moisture in it. Sure. Already. Harder to get through. So that means I need more speed. Mm-hmm. And chances are I need it to be a little steeper so it doesn't grab it quite so much. And if I need it to be a little steeper and I need more speed to to get it down to the bottom of this golf ball, I'd better add a lot of loft. Okay. 
because if I'm swinging harder and I don't add loft, this ball's just coming out hot. Mm-hmm. That's a tough combination. Yeah. So I got to launch the ball higher. So I'm going to put the ball more forward in my swing. Yes, John, forward, not back. Mm-hmm. Lots of people go, oh, I got to get down to the bottom of this. I'd better, and I got to come in steep. I better put it in the back. Wait a second. If I do that, the club is now angled more down mm-hmm. and moving more down. You there less- isn't anything about that that says up. That's yeah, two you downs. Just de-lofted the club. Yeah. So that ball's not going to leap up in the air at all, is it? No. And it doesn't even mean that the club got to the bottom of its arc, which means the mass of the club that's on the bottom of the club didn't even get below the golf ball. It got kind of toward the back side of the golf ball and launched it more forward. Mm-hmm. Not helping. Yeah. So I'm going to put the ball like about where my left hip joint is, about mid collarbone, mm-hmm. almost to the armpit. So it's like a three wood position. Okay. And I'm going to go down steep at this and I'm going to get my bottom of my club on the arc of that swing to be bottoming out right below it. So I come in steep. So I'm ripping through the grass behind it, but yet I still got a lot of loft on the head because I chose a sand wedge or a lob wedge to do that with. Mm -hmm. So it tosses the ball straight up into the air over the grass in front and over the bunker or however much it is. Right. And then it flies high, lands softly, bounces and trickles out. So that's a shot. Mm Mm-hmm. And I didn't even open up the face. Yeah, because I don't need to. Yeah, you, you should not have to. If you have the four wedges, you should not have to manipulate when you use them. They're, they're all there for particular reasons. You know, and, and everybody asked me, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we, we see all the pros and they do that. Well, a lot of these guys are not carrying the same wedges. And certainly they grind the back of theirs off a whole lot differently than the ones we're playing. Definitely, yeah. Yep. You know, so they can change the angles of their clubs a little bit differently without the same risk that we have. Right. But as soon as you flip a club face open, you, you do have the leading edge going up, but you also have the top of the club laying back down. So you lose the height of the face of the club. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got a lot of guys that go through this and the ball be halfway sitting up in the rough and they'll go, oh, I got to do this. And they f- take their 56 degree club or something, they flip it open. And next thing you know, this thing's like a 62 or 63 degree club, and yet it doesn't have a very tall face now. And they just slice right underneath it. Yep. And the ball sits down the rough, and they whiff it, and they just kind of look at me, and I'm like, I would have done that differently. <laughs> you know, I had a hot shot young player do that. Um, he uh, he came to me, and he said, my short game's bad. Here's the shots I like to play. I said, okay. I said, so what I did is I took him to the worst lies possible and said, how are we playing these shots? And I had about five lies that were just awful. And he couldn't get any of them to advance to the green. Mm-hmm. They were all just muffed, just whiffed it underneath him, chunked him, did all kinds of nasty stuff. And he's a good player. Mm-hmm. But his choices, so were a lot of opening the face, a lot of put the ball back in the stance. Mm-hmm. And he showed me the way he likes to play him. So I gave him shots that just weren't going to work that way. So I could open up his mind to say, look, there's other ways of being successful here. So I showed him the shot I just described. Out of the nasty lie, I hit mine about 20 yards to two feet. Oof. He hit his about two feet to 20 yards. <laughs> <laughs> so, been there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Got that t shirt already. <laughs> so, the point was is when we're talking about wedge play and we're talking about different things around, you have to be adaptable. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to pick a different club to pick a different shot, to find out what's really going to happen from club to ball, to to get it in the air, to do what you need it to do. And you can't think about styles. You have to think about function. So here I am talking about getting a club to the bottom of a golf ball with a tall face, but plenty of loft on it. And it pops it up into the air. And all of a sudden I showed him that shot and he looked at me like, wait a minute. I don't see anybody doing that on TV. Like, so? (laughs) You just saw me hit it to two feet. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you need it to be televised? Because we could get a camera out and put it on tripod. <laughs> that's right. If, if that's where you really had to see that. And he yeah. looked at me like, no. I said, okay, so try a few. And next thing you know, he could hit that shot. And he looked at me like, I never knew that anything different was possible than just opening up the face. Well, you know, the other thing too about opening up the face, because I've seen a lot of people that I play with do it because like you say, that, that kid said, that's how they see it on TV. Mm-hmm. But you got to keep in mind that when you watch the guy on TV open up the face and hit the the pitch shot, it's not the first time in three weeks that he's taken that shot like it is with you. It's the first time maybe since he got off the practice tee today. 
that he's taken that shot. Okay. I just want to point that out. Yeah. There is that level of, of repeated doing things. Yeah. I'm not going to mention the word, John. I'll save you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This repeated of performing an action Mm -hmm. over and over and over again Mm -hmm. proves the point that you can do it that way. But if you don't repeat it that often, then you have no evidence nor even a personal belief at the moment that you're going to do that, that it's actually going to work. Yeah. You have to be able to know how to do it. You need to know Mm -hmm. what you're doing and how to do it because there's something, and and I'm going to bring this, it leads to me to a a question I have always had and never had the guts to ask because it's a stupid shot. Um, And I never do it on purpose, although some, some, some people do. But a lot of times, here's a scenario. You're in some thick stuff close to the green. Yeah. Let's say maybe five yards off the green and the rough is really thick. You take sand wedge because that's that's the wedge I'm most comfortable with and use most often. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I just for some reason, I just feel comfortable with it. And I, I swing. But at the bottom of the swing, just as the club hits the, the ball, it also makes contact with like a clump of dirt or something that basically stops the movement of the club. Right. But the mm-hmm. ball flies up and reacts well. Mm-hmm. And it's like, boy, if I could do that on purpose, it would be great. Yeah, nice timing. Yeah. I um, mean, the but club that's, stopping right at the perfect time when it struck the ball, right? But that's just basically serendipity, right? I mean, that, that's or just, luck. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't really um, plan on doing that. And that's not really something you should practice, correct? No, essentially what you just said is I'm going to stick this club into the ground right below my ball and stab at it. I'm not yeah. sure that I would make that attempt on any regular basis. Yeah. But I am saying that could work on some shots. It could. Like you said, it's thick, it's dense. Yeah. At some point, when your club comes ripping through that grass, it sort of gathers up some of that grass. Mm-hmm. And then there's this clump of grass, so to speak. Stuff. That just finally got your club to stop. Yeah. Good thing it happened right at impact and not just before. Yeah. Oh, it's also happened just before. <laughs> yeah. And many of and us then have, it's not so fun. Yeah. Right? And we have seen that, you know, so like you say, you're you now instead bad of, luck. Instead of five yards off the green, you're four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. And, like, well, and one more shot down. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> Not to mention the embarrassment factor. Yeah. So, or depending on who you play with, whatever it is that they're about to say is coming your way. And I hate to say this <laughs> um, because it's something that I, I have basically fought against for years. Uh, but when it comes to being able to know what the scenario is, what the shot condition is, or what the lie condition is, and dictating what wedge you should use for that, you have to do it. And you have to do it more than a couple times around and try to remember for next time. You need to actually put yourself in that position. You need to go to a Jeff who says, yeah, you think you're good at this? Here, hit this shot. And um, and put yourself in different scenarios that you find yourself in a lot in the course of a round that give you trouble. And, and find out how to get out of it. And and repeat that action. And repeat it over doing, and over and over again. Some we're might, doing a great job avoiding that word, Mr. Some Everson. might use the word practice. Oh, you had to say it. I won't. <laughs> I can't believe you said it. It hurt you to do it, didn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> but uh, How about let's just call it recreation. Repeated recreation. There you go. Somewhat of a cha- – like a skills challenge. Yes. That you continue to do over and over so you could perform better. That's, that said you, skill when it was time to do it. There you go. Yeah. And, you know, learn how to use them. Because I've, I've played with people, they have a brand new set of wedges, and they have no idea how to use them. They have no idea which one to use, how to swing. Um, in fact, I've got one one guy I play with now who's so disenchanted <laughs> with his wedge game. He's like, I have no idea where this is going to go. Which means that it's going to be even worse of a result than normal because his confidence level is at zilch. But um, I think we should talk more about this because this is this is a problem everybody has, especially, it is. especially recreational golfers. This is where we lose most because for the most part, our first putt is a chip. So let's talk about it when we come right back. Can we do that? Yep. All right. We are those weekend golf guys. We're going to fix this if it kills us. Hang on. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us, facebook.com slash golf guys. 
Have you watched another weekend of PGA Tournament golf realizing, hey, I don't have any skin in the game? Add to the excitement of watching by going to DraftKings, a leader in daily fantasy sports. They will put you in the center of the action with a free shot at $1 million top prize with your first deposit. Easy to play. What you do, you pick six golfers. You stay under the salary cap. You submit your lineup before the tournament tees off on Thursday. Then you sit back and follow the action. The more red numbers they have on the leaderboard, the closer you'll be to winning some green. You can rack up points for pars, for birdies, finishing positions and a whole lot more. All right, you may not be able to get a ticket and actually go to the course, but DraftKings is giving you the opportunity to scratch your competitive itch and reign supreme. Download the DraftKings app right now. Use the code WEEKEND during sign-up. This week, DraftKings is putting you in the action with a free shot at a $1 million top prize. The code WEEKEND, and you can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And we are those weekend golf guys, and we are single hand well, not single handedly, because we got four hands here total. I'm John Ashton with two, he's Jeff Smith with two. And it's his two hands and his mind that uh, will help you actually by the time this show is over. Be all excited about heading out to the uh, practice tee wow. at your local course. You and know what that is. And repeating some motions over and over again. You must be reading a book about it or something. <laughs> Uh, we're talking short game and we're talking the, the, the nemesis of most of us recreational golfers is we don't hit very accurate approach shots on a regular basis. So many a time we're looking anywhere from 10 yards in, uh, off a green and we mm-hmm. need to get the ball close because basically, as I mentioned earlier, what we're looking at is our first putt is a chip. A lot of times that's really true, right? They're off the green by a little bit and you need to loft the ball up and you need to bounce it and roll it a little bit toward the hole. Right. You know, and a lot of people, the first thing they do, you know, like they're, they're, they're that one club wonder, you know, they can do anything with one club. They think, yeah. I wonder why they only carry one club, but that's, yeah, they, know, they bring their there. eight iron to, to chip with and pitch with. And yeah. And some people, depending, I, it, this is very generational, John, your generation they're rolling in with that low rolling shot. I call it a low forward instead of a chip and run. Okay. Right. Cause that's what the ball's doing. But at the same time, it's also what your hands are doing. They're remaining low and they're moving forward. Right. The club head is also remaining low and moving forward. So mm-hmm. I call it a low forward just to kind of picture, you know, what we're going to do. Right. And what the ball's going to do. Gotcha. And the other one's kind of a high soft, you know, where the, the younger generation, the high school kids and college kids, the first thing they do, and they're whipping out of the lob wedge for everything. Mm-hmm. And they want to hit the high soft shot. Mm-hmm. So the club goes high and they go through it softly and the ball flies high and lands softly. So I call it a high soft. So you got two basic shots, but you could do a high soft technique with a lower lofted club and amaze yourself the trajectory and the rollout that you get. Mm-hmm. And you could even do that low forward motion with a higher lofted club. And you would amaze yourself at the tra- trajectory and the rollout from club to club. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable what you could do with two basic motions and four clubs. One one of the things I think that we all see, again, it comes from not pulling the club out and and taking the shot until we're on the course and we need to have that shot. Woefully short because we have no idea how much force to swing with. Uh, how much of an arc to actually make? People- I get that question a lot. How far back should I go? Yeah. How about seven o'clock? Should I go to seven o'clock or eight o'clock or nine o'clock? I get that all the time. The ball doesn't know how far the club traveled back. It no. knows how cleanly it got struck. It knows the angle of the face. It knows the speed and the force that it was hit with. It knows mm-hmm. those things. But isn't how far back determine the speed and the force with which it's hit? It can with some, but mm-hmm. how about the guy who goes short back and fast through? How about him? I hate that. How guy. about the Phil Mickelson type, the guy who goes long back and and slow and smooth and syrupy through? Yeah, I hate that guy so, too. <laughs> so you you just got to understand that there's different ways of going about this. Yeah, there are people who their own natural rhythm is a little bit longer and more flowing and easy and smooth, and we look at that and they're like, oh, look at this guy's syrupy smooth swing. I'll bet you his short game is like that too. And the guy that's an abrupt pounder, I'll bet you his short game is like that too. Huh. Never thought of it that way. And then the, those of us who, who mix it up because we have no idea what we're doing. That's the yippee guy. Yeah. Oh, sorry, John. We probably should talk about that. <laughs> yippee ki <kaye. laughs> Yeah. 
So in that, if there's a position that you're in and you just don't feel right about how you're delivering the club to the landing spot in terms of your rhythm and your tempo, you know what I like to do is I take away a golf ball and I tell people to figure out what they like best. And I just stick a tee in the ground and say, just barely clip the tee. Hmm. So I want you to find your best rhythm method. We're talking about what's their best, best rhythm. Is it a short and burst? Is it a medium or is it a long and flowing? And which one produces the best contact with the tee in the ground? And then I start to say, okay, which one do you have the most confidence in? Which one do you think that you could produce the best, cleanest shots with? And I let them find it. And then once they find that, then we start sticking a golf ball at the bottom of that arc of the swing and then say, okay, here you go. And then the question is, okay, great. This, this rhythm thing feels really good. How do I alter the distance? And I said, well, how about just changing your amount of effort? Keep within that same flow, but just change the amount of effort. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, now we got it. And that way I gave them something that they could trust, something that's more natural. So that way they don't have to try to think their way through it. Should I go back a little shorter? Should I go back a little farther? Like, wait a second, go with the natural flowing rhythm of what you do and you'll find out. And then sometimes the people that still want to have that question answered, I just record them doing it. I just say, you stand back and feel this five shots and you make them the short, medium and long, short, medium and long, give them five, six shots. And I'll just record it and say, here's who you are. And then they can see how far their arms go back on their own. And then their questions are answered. Yes, on the longer ones, they do go further back because they watched it. But the tempo is usually the same. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's the key. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. Timing. Tempo is very tempo. important. Yeah. Because we want people to be good at their short game, which means the landing spot of their club has to be really good. Really, really good. Really good. Yes. And then you can also change it up with using different clubs with different lofts. I mean, if, if, you, if you have the same tempo and the same force with a, a lob wedge as you do with a sand wedge, the lob wedge isn't going to go as far. But it'll go a little higher. Yeah. A little softer. And roll and out a little less. Should have some more. I even on. mess around with ball positions and I show people. They're, they're like, well, you showed me all these ones where the ball is slightly forward. Do you ever put it back? I'm like, yep, sure do. Why? I'll put one back just barely back of center. Okay. And these are usually the ones where I want the ball to get struck, fly a little bit lower mm -hmm. and have some extra spin. So they're just getting struck just prior to the bottom of the arc of the swing. So that way I can ensure that it is a cleanly struck shot. But the back of the golf ball is just barely back of center, not trying to move it back of center, like to the right shoulder or the right foot or the right yeah. hip joint. I don't, I don't go that far back. Yeah. And then you watch the guys on TV too, and they'll like, they'll, they'll pitch with like their feet together. What's that all about? Mm -hmm. Comfort. They've okay. liked how they do that. They've perched in a certain place. If they keep their feet together and they keep their ball back just barely right of center, they won't ever move back, drift back when they take the club back. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Gotcha. But if their feet are wide, you can pivot off that back foot now and drift off the shot. Yeah. And then you have to come back to it. And a lot of times we want to keep the low point of the swing just in front of the golf ball. So it's really helpful to have, oh, the center of gravity or center of mass of our bodies right out in front of the ball. Right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, a lot of people have, have extolled the virtues and the necessities of keeping your knees kind of flexed. I would agree because people who are rigid don't move well. Mm -hmm. Having some flex in the knees certainly helps the entire body do its thing more athletically. Right. Can you imagine any athlete in any sport that you've ever watched or tried to perform with locked joints? It's not happening. No. Nope. So, yes. Yeah. It's a matter of how much knee flex. For example, if they wanted to flex their lead knee just a little bit more, let's say I'm a right-handed golfer mm -hmm. and I wanted to flex my left knee a little bit more, drive the weight down to the ball of the left foot, guess what I've just done? I've helped me move everything more downhill. Thus, so we do that some in bunkers when we need oh, to do okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. So we, we help ourselves lower the left side, lower the lead side, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So the club is now coming in at a little bit more of a downward blow. There's, there's another question that I guess many of us don't even, don't even know enough to address or don't care enough to address or don't think about enough to address. You know, we use our wedges a lot. As recreational golfers, as we've mentioned, because we don't get close on the green 
as often as we would like to. How long does it take grooves to wear out to the point where you don't get the spin you deserve on the wedge you're using? Well, am I going to stay away from it? Depends. But let's say that you're a guy who uses his wedge a lot. Mm -hmm. Better replace them a couple times a year. Oh, that could get expensive, man. It could be. But if you're using them well, you'll save money in the shots and make money on the golf course. Pay for your new wedge. (laughs) Because they... they, You don't know the cheapskates I play with, man. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in that case, John, find some new guys who are not so cheapskates. Walk, walking right? off 18 with a dollar 32 in your pocket ain't going to get you new wedges very often. That didn't even cover the tip. Dollar <laughs> 32. Come on. And that's if that's you like win. A, that's like a candy bar and tax. I know. Man. <laughs> can't, can't even get the refill on the Coke. You get the wrong crowd you're playing golf with, yeah, man. I know. Well, you know, it's safe. <laughs> it's safe. Because you can only lose a dollar 32, too, you know. <laughs> i gotta yeah. know 18 holes how's this two cent part coming in i'm not sure i got a hard time with the well i've got a hard time with the change part of this one. we just don't right? round up like you working on percentages yeah. or something? <laughs> oh man wow uh, or is that just or is that just everybody's emptying their pockets <laughs> dumping the change into the it. you pot. got what i got here here you go dollar 32 and all the pocket <laughs> lane you can carry that's right exactly <laughs> we're throwing everything into the cup holder winner takes all <laughs> uh, which which leads me to the question though they they wear out does sharpening them sharpening them work it does okay it does i know cleaning them works wonders <laughs> It really does. I wish yeah, someone told me that three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that you knew you had grooves for the last three years. <laughs> I think that was a few shows ago where I mentioned the fact yeah. that a wet rag does miracles for you. It does. <laughs> In a brush. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? It's so, so much. I know they have them. Interestingly enough, they have them They, they usually on, on um, driving ranges, practice facilities. Mm-hmm. I know they have these little boxes on the back of a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And you go dunk your club in there, mm-hmm. and they have these little bristles, and they clean off your grooves for you. I know. Yeah, I, cool. I'm surprised that you know. I had to mention that a couple <laughs> couple weeks ago, just so you knew what those were. <laughs> we've, been, we've been making like, it, wow! I just thought those were ashtrays. <laughs> we've been making it a point now to play at golf courses that have taken the ball washer, club washer, and mounted it to the rear fender of the cart. <laughs> That is so convenient. Everybody should do that. (laughs) Right. Like, wow, that's good. (laughs) They have a cooler on the other side. (laughs) Exactly. You notice notice that? You got everything taken care of, man. (laughs) (laughs) You do. So I was was working with a guy Mm -hmm. about his short game. Okay. And I told him, and this is this is something that here you are extolling the virtues of golf carts, and I'm going to extol the virtues of not riding in one for the purposes of having a better short game okay. and being more aware of the slopes on the greens. Because you can see it as you approach. You can see it as you walk up. Mm-hmm. But golf cart riders never have that advantage. Mm-hmm. They're not paying attention. They're being whipped all over the guy, the guy in the passenger seat. He's got the leg up. He's got these braces. He's he's grabbing the handle up there. We call it the OS handle, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, surely, hang on here for that dear life, right? That's it. And you know he's got that going. And the, and the the other guy, the guy driving, he's out there trying to play. Like he's driving a fast four wheeler. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're whipping around those curvy cart paths and slamming on the brakes. Mm-hmm. And and nobody paid attention. No. To the green and the and the scenario around there. And then they get out and they're walking down from the back of the hill from behind the green or from the side or wherever it is. And they don't have any clue of what this green's really going to do. No. And then they're not even paying attention to the, the terrain that they're walking on. No. I mean, that's. The passenger, he's still half car sick by the time he gets there. You know, <laughs> well, he's stumbling out of the cart. This is a pet peeve. And maybe we should do a show, an entire show on pet peeves. Oh, um, geez, we could do a <laughs> mud for that. This, but this is one of mine is most of us. And I, I'm, I berate myself for doing it too, but most of us don't even begin to consider the shot in front of us until we get to the ball. You That's really it. berate yourself. Bef- do you do it before the shot? Or yeah. do you just wait and berate yourself for not doing it after the shot? Well, you know, when, when the shot goes awry and I say, man, <laughs> if you had just thought about <laughs> that, you would have known what you were going to do, you know? <laughs> but again, yeah. that's a pet peeve, and it's a topic for another day. Uh, hang out with us. we got a few minutes left yet together. We are those weekend golf guys. Hey. 
Have you watched another weekend of PGA Tournament Golf realizing, hey, I don't have any skin in the game? Add to the excitement of watching by going to DraftKings, a leader in daily fantasy sports. They'll put you in the center of the action with a free shot at $1 million top prize with your first deposit. Easy to play. What you do, you pick six golfers. You stay under the salary cap. You submit your lineup before the tournament tees off on Thursday. Then you sit back and follow the action. The more red numbers they have on the leaderboard, the closer you'll be to winning some green. You can rack up points for pars, for birdies, finishing position and a whole lot more. All right, you may not be able to get a ticket and actually go to the course, but DraftKings is giving you the opportunity to scratch your competitive itch and reign supreme. Download the DraftKings app right now. Use the code WEEKEND during sign-up. This week, DraftKings is putting you in the action with a free shot at a $1 million top prize. The code WEEKEND, and you can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. All right, those weekend golf guys, we are here every uh, weekend. You can catch us bright and early. Uh, I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith, director of instruction, uh, also purveyor of the um, JeffSmithGolfInstruction.com. Yes. Used to be the Plain and Simple Golf School, but he's expanded. Well, it is still plain I still and have. I'm still running Plain and Simple Golf School, mm-hmm. right? But I've changed the name of the website. You could still play, type in PlainAndSimpleGolf.com and it will come to me. All righty then. It will bounce you right to... JeffSmithGolfInstruction.com. Yeah. And fantastic. And the man knows whereof he speaks. And if, if you listen to him, I have listened to him. I've, I've taken no official lessons. I've been in front of him a couple times when he's got a few extra moments in the golf cave. He answers a question or teaches me something. But just listening to him and asking questions here in this venue where he's 80 miles away from me. My handicap is now an eight, by the way. Your, uh, your bunker shots are a whole lot better. Yes, they are. Mr. Hinge and Thump. Yes, they are. Hinge and Thump. Mm. Great video that you can watch. We've got that for you, too. But listen, an eight is pretty cool. I have never been a single-digit handicap in my life. Actually, I've never Great. played well enough to keep track of a handicap. <laughs> I didn't want to know. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool that you're actually starting to write down that you played all 18 holes, too. Oh, I know, man. And keeping awesome. score and everything. <laughs> it's, it's I know. A, it's, it's a whole new experience. <laughs> <laughs> But anyhow, uh, this is it. Just keep in mind, as we said, that that for most of us whose approach shots are not as accurate as we would like, our first putt is usually going to be a chip. So let's learn how to do it better so we can make our second putts easier because the whole idea of a first putt is to get really close. So you basically have a gimme for the second one. Yeah. So if you can do that with a chip, then just think how many strokes. I mean, just think – you don't even have to admit it to, to us in public. Just think to yourself, last time you played, how many strokes could you have saved if those chips you hit got you close enough to make a gimme? Isn't that amazing? That's cool. what I thought. <laughs> you know what? There's there's a guy, and I've mentioned him on, on the show before. He's one of my students now. He's a listener of the show outside of Lexington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And he's he keeps sending me his scores. He's telling me what he's doing. We have talked about his golf swing a lot. And now we're headed down the short game route and he plays a lot of golf Mm -hmm. and you know, he's, he's going to learn about how to cut five more shots real fast because we're going, we're going full short game on him. Yeah. Well, if you can, if you can eliminate five to seven shots in every round. Yeah. Just think, huh? That's cool. And it's not out of the realm of possibility. That's right. Weekendgolfguys.com. Go there. JeffSmithGolfInstruction.com. Go there. Facebook.com slash golf guys. Go there too. Follow us. You're telling people where to go. Practice. I am. Practice with those wedges. Get closer. Or not. It's up to you. Just go play some golf. And once again, for the bonus content this week, we hop into the way back machine. We go back four years and we go back to Myrtle Beach and we talk with Jeff Monday. And welcome back, John Ashton in studio. Brooke Watts doing the uh, yeoman's work for Jeff Smith, who's decided to take another day off. God knows why. Um, Mark Hunter and Trevor, producer at the controls. And we're going to go down to Myrtle Beach. Oh, if that were only the case in reality. And talk to Jeff Monday. Jeff, first off, uh, hello, and thanks for spending some time with those weekend golf guys. How you doing, man? I am great. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, this is fantastic, man. The Myrtle Beach World Amateur Handicap Tournament. Again, how many years in a row does this make now? This is our 33rd year. Been going on since 1984. So obviously you guys know how to do it now. Yeah, that's right. It's been (laughs) been going on for quite a while, so we've gotten a lot of it pretty much down to a T at this point. This is so great because this is a way for anybody who is – 
quasi-serious about swinging a golf club. You don't have to be good. You just have to be into it. And you have to like to party a little bit because if you don't like to party, then there's no sense going down for how many days does it take to play well, this? It's 72, it's 72 holes 72 over holes. four days. And mm-hmm. then each night we do have the, the world's largest 19th hole. Which is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly oh, intrepid, uh, intrepid producer Mark's in, 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 interest has been peaked. <laughs> woke up on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is, it is the perfect blend of serious golf kind of competition, but mm-hmm. just having a good time, letting loose. And just, you know, just being around other people that just love the game of golf. And it just blends so well. And what better setting to do it in than here in, uh, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You get to play a different golf course every day and, and hang out and have fun. And, and, you know, then competition's a part of it. But this is what we refer to as the Everyman's U.S. Open. <laughs> it's like a major for all these people. Yeah. You come down. It doesn't matter how good you are at golf. It's a handicapped golf tournament. We've got 3,000 players, so everybody's flighted kind of around the same handicap and so you can just come down have fun let loose and enjoy yourself we use 56 courses this year uh, and we're on 33 a day 56 Mm. that still leaves about 218 courses open (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's right we're we're only using about half of our allotted uh courses so there's still plenty of room if you just want to come down and play some golf that week you can still uh find a tee time without a problem you know, I have a cousin in New Jersey who goes to Myrtle Beach for vacation. He used to go for a week every year. He owns his own business, and now he's decided he's going to go for a week every six months. Mm. And I think it's about ready to turn into a week every quarter. Yeah, you know, we've turned a lot of people into residents down here, too. So, yeah. you know, it's a great yeah. place to uh, to retire to or have a second home. And then, you know, then you just play golf all the time. You don't have to pay the expense of travel. How much How much is we talking to get into this tournament? Right now, we're at our uh, our highest entry fee. We've gone through all of our early entry rates at mm-hmm. six twenty five, but that includes your four rounds of golf, an awesome tournament gift bag headlined by Greg Norman Collection and Club Glove and PGA Tour Superstore merchandise, and then your four evenings of the nineteenth hole, which is three hours each night. It's open bar, free food from all of our local awesome restaurants wow. here in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> it is. Uh, Charlie Reimer and Tommy Ganey and Katrick and McGinnis and all these other guys, you know, some celebrity guests and things walking around. We have live music in the ballroom every night with some great bands. Uh, we've got an indoor par three, a 60-foot long putt with contests going on all the time. So it's basically 120,000 square feet of golf party mecca kind of stuff that includes 11 bars, 12 uh, food serving stations, uh, an ice cream line. I think we're going to have to talk about maybe next year having the weekend golf guys broadcast live from down there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, what we are going to do though too is it, that that price is six twenty five. But for your for your listeners, if they want to go, it's MyrtleBeachWorldAmateur dot com, and I will still talk about some more stuff. But golf guys sixteen, you can use that promo code get fifty dollars off and get it down to five seventy five. So that's for for your four rounds of golf. The gift bag, the 19th hole each evening for you and a guest. If you have a guest, they're included with that price to come in and eat and drink and be merry. And uh, and then all of our flight winners and ties are going to go play a fifth round championship playoff at the Die Club at, at at Barefoot Landing to crown our world champion. So Ooh. if you are a flight winner or ties, you get awesome prizes from PGA Tour Superstore gift cards uh, for the top five in each flight. All flight winners and ties go play for that fifth round. So. And it's it's so huge, right, because it's 3,300 players, and we have golf outlets all over the world. When you win, that put your picture out there with that trophy <laughs> as, you know, the, the champion of this awesome event that's been going on for three and a half decades. That's amazing. I think Brooke's putting her list of participants she's taking up to Myrtle Beach right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I tell you, I, I, I looked at the, the tournament. It's amazing. And I also love that y'all have got such a wide of, range of – different categories men versus women and broken it down i mean it's it's something if you've got a golfing family what a great way to spend to spend some time together at myrtle beach and this amazing tournament my gosh well done guys yeah and it, it that's just it, the way it breaks down because of the amount of people so our ladies uh, our women's division is uh, about 320 players so you know that's a huge women's yeah. golf tournament yeah. but then you're going to break that down by handicap, so it's pretty tight range. And then our men's divisions are all broken down by age, um, age, and then handicap. So you're going to get put in a flight 
with, you know, 45 to 50 other players that are within a shot of your own handicap. And that's the beauty of it because we all, nobody wants to go play in a handicap event where you're, you got 10, 15 shot differences. Yeah. But here you're Absolutely. within a stroke because it's, it's broken down through so many people. And it's it's just a great way to play in a in a handicap golf tournament, no matter what your skill level is. From a gross uh, player, we have a scratch division, all the way up to you know our bottom flights. And each flight will be somewhere between twenty and thirty five handicaps. But oh, that's great, man! That's amazing. When is it? It is August twenty ninth through September the the second, uh, right here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's always the week before Labor Day starting that Monday uh, before Labor Day. So this year, August 29th to September 2nd. And, Brooke, September may be the hottest month in Texas, but it ain't the hottest month in South Carolina. And if it ever gets to 112 with the heat index, you get an ocean. That's exactly what you're right. That's about mind, where John. we've been. That's about where we are right now, but uh, we'll <laughs> cool off a little by the end of August. Absolutely. Man, that is that looks like a great term. I think we, those weekend golf guys, we definitely need to uh, make a point to make it down there and mm-hmm. to, to see all the action. And gosh, just it, and what a great way with tournament golf and an experience to bring everybody together in that golfing community in such a great atmosphere. Yeah, that's a yeah competition drives it all. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to just kind of see where you stand a little bit. But, you know, by the end of the third day, half the field's out of it. And you can just kind of see that you know, you, you're playing in a tournament, you're playing by the rules, you're playing in, a, in that environment, but it's still just so much fun, right? You love the game, and you're yeah. meeting new people, and you're playing with people from all over the world. We have 30, 33 countries represented, um, all 50 states in the U.S., and, and so you're just playing with people that you have never would meet before outside of doing this, and just having fun and loving golf, and then, like I said, who doesn't? Who can't have fun and for three hours in a huge golf party with open bar and free food? <laughs> yeah, exactly. if, you, if you can't have fun playing golf and you can't have fun at a nineteenth hole, that's that's not going to cost you any more out of pocket. Then you you should check your pulse as much as you do. God, man. Um, and again, what's what's the the website here, Jeff? MyrtleBeachWorldAmateur dot com. Right. And like I said, your listeners can use Golf Guys 16, take mm-hmm. $50 off that registration price, get it down to 575 and come have a good time. Once you do it once, you just you can't wait to get back. We've got we have still seven people that have played in every single one wow. of these things. Wow. Um, oh, wow. Those those are our crazy people, but we've got guys <laughs> that have been playing for 20, 25 years, mm. and our average player plays in six of these things in their lifetime. It's yeah. just something that keeps you coming back. Uh, because it's the game of golf that we love, and it's a great way to experience it with everybody else that's just like you. It's the weekend golfers. It's the guys, it, it, the guys and girls that just love going out and playing golf. Because that's the nat- that's the natural progression, I think, for for folks who've been playing for a while and they start maybe taking it more seriously, start taking some lessons, start getting good, and then you want to see actually whether it's just you know the losers you play with on a regular basis that you can beat. <laughs> Or if it's you know other people in the world, and just you, you start aching for a little bit of uh, serious or quasi serious competition, yeah, but, you know. And all you have to have to play is a USGA handicap index, and if you don't have one that you currently keep, we'll get you one for free uh, as soon as you sign up. And you can start posting your scores, and then we do all of the evaluating, monitoring. That's what we spend our time doing during the week while everybody else is having a good time, but. You know, it's we take it very seriously, uh, but you know, because we want it to be fair. But now's the time to do it. Our entry deadline's August fifth. But um, no, yeah. it's awesome, and you guys should definitely come down. If not this year, next year, see it for yourselves. We will start making plans for that uh, next year. Absolutely, He's fantastic, Jeff Monday, uh, Myrtle Beach man. First off, you live in Myrtle Beach, so you know we don't have a whole lot of sympathy for you to begin with. But, <laughs> and then you run this golf tournament for a living. Gee, your life is tough, Jeff. I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm a blessed man. <laughs> One more time, the website is? Myrtle Beach, worldamateur.com. Golf Guys 16, get you 50 bucks off the entry fee. Jeff, I appreciate that. That's that's something we didn't even talk about, man. That's kind of a surprise to me, and I appreciate you doing that. And so no problem. I appreciate you having me on. It's a pleasure to talk about it. I always enjoy it. We will uh, we'll keep in touch. Anytime you got something going on on Myrtle Beach, let us know, because we love to sit here landlocked and just you know live our life vicariously through other people. <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> I'll keep looking at palm trees in the ocean. Okay. Yeah, we appreciate that, Jeff. Thanks, man. Rub it in a little more. Jeff Monday, Myrtle Beach. Thanks a lot, guy. Talk to you later. Thank you. Have a good day. We will be right back. Don't you move. <laughs> 